Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns they are going to be selling in their upcoming December of 2016 Premier Auction. And today we have a Frommer model of 1901. This is a very early and very unusual and interesting automatic pistol. Now this dates actually back to some work by a number of other guys, namely Karl Kernke and a financier named George Roth. These guys were developing early long recoil pistols in the Austro-Hungarian Empire in the 1890s, stuff kind of like this. And George Roth, or Georg Roth, was the financier behind these guns. And he ran an ammunition company, but he didn't have like a full-on pistol fabrication factory. So he made small numbers of prototypes himself, but he had to actually work with another company for large-scale production. And he couldn't do that in Austria because of competition with other companies uh, for Austrian military contracts. And he ended up contracting with FEG in Budapest to do a lot of his manufacturing. And it's there that he ran into a guy named Rudolf Frommer, who was, uh, at varying times, several different levels of authority in FEG. Now, Rudolf Frommer, uh, was born in the 1860s, and he actually initially studied finance. And in 1896, he was working for one of the major banks in Budapest as an accountant type dude. And the FEG rifle or uh, arms manufacturing concern was in some significant financial trouble and had to come work with the bank to resolve things. And Rudolf Frommer was one of the agents the bank assigned to work with FEG. Well, Turns out, Frommer was kind of an engineering-oriented sort of guy and a, a very talented uh, mechanic and designer. And he really took this opportunity to start working more and more closely with FEG. In 1904, he would end up in a, a major uh, sales position with them. And by 1914, he was actually CEO of the entire company. So he definitely had a career transition there. And one of the things that Frommer did, in fact, Frommer's best known for this series of pistols that he developed, and because he was becoming more and more involved with FEG, he was able to promote their manufacture at FEG. Ultimately, this would result in the Frommer Stop, which was uh, an Austro-Hungarian military issue pistol uh, during the First World War. Now, the Frommer Stop was really a, a much more complicated gun than it needed to be. It used a long recoil action, it had a rotating bolt, all locked up, and it effectively basically fired 32 ACP. However, that was the final version. The first version of the gun is actually this, the model of 1901. It is a much larger pistol. We'll take a look at the size comparison here in a minute. It's actually chambered for a predecessor to what would become the 8mm Roth or 8mm Steyr cartridge, 8x19, uh, used in the Roth Steyr 1907 automatic pistols, which are very cool, and I actually have some video on those. Ch take a look at the description text to see those other videos if you're interested. What Frommer did was he, he developed this long recoil locked breech rotating bolt system. And this is the first gun that he developed it with, or in, uh, fed by stripper clip. It has an integral magazine, so it'll hold 10 rounds, but there is no detachable magazine in it. Um, a very safe pistol, but a complex pistol. Now, only about 200 of these were probably manufactured. They were tested militarily by a couple different countries, although accepted by nobody. And the one we have the most information on, at least the one I have the most information on, is the American trial. In 1904, Frommer contacted the United States government to basically say, hey, check out this patent I just submitted. Um, he actually got this patented in 1903, but referred to it as a model of 1901 pistol. So he contacted the US in 1904, and said, hey, you know, you might be interested in taking a look at my pistol, and ultimately sent over a gun. Uh, the US pistol trial called for 5,000 rounds of ammunition. There was a miscommunication, and the Frommer, well, the FEG company only sent uh, 1,000 rounds of ammo with the gun. But US took a look at it and said, well, you know, okay, we can do some good stuff with 1,000 rounds, so let's take a look. And they ended up firing 970, uh, about 470 of those in various, uh, various types of testing, you know, rapid fire testing, reloading testing, rust testing, that sort of thing, and another 500 in an endurance trial. And the gun actually performed reasonably well, better than you would expect for an early, uh, you know, like a first version prototype pistol like this. 
It did have a number of problems, and what the Army ultimately complained about, the Army ultimately did not adopt this, obviously, which is why you don't see this being carried around by soldiers still to this day. Uh, the problems they had were, first off, they didn't like that it was an 8 millimeter pistol. They, that was too small. The U.S. was interested in 45 caliber pretty much exclusively. And then they had complaints about the stripper clips, that it, they were finicky stripper clips, that you had to be careful and load them just right. Uh, there were a number of instances during the testing where if you didn't pull the clip out um, firmly enough when you, were, when you got the last round loaded in, you could cause a double feed. And sometimes the clips just didn't really work well. And interestingly, the other thing that they complained about was that when this was out of ammo, it was not sufficiently obvious that it was out of ammo. Now, this locks open when it's empty. However, locking open does not actually obstruct your line of sight of the sights. And by the US Army standards in 1904, that wasn't good enough. Now, it's interesting to consider that the 1911 locks open pretty much just like this does. Uh, this doesn't have a slide, but the 1911 slide locks back, and you can see people to this day who are novices shooting the 1911 having it lock back, and they continue trying to shoot because they can still see the sights. So those were the reasons why the U.S. Army rejected this. Um, this is in no way ready for military contract, but it's really interesting to look at as the first variation of of an automatic pistol family. So let's go ahead and take a closer look and uh, check out exactly how this does function. We'll go straight to a size comparison. Here's a 1911 Frommer 1901. This thing is massive. Um, it's actually not that heavy of a pistol, really, for its size, but it's just huge. All right, so like all of the Frommer series of pistols, this is a long recoil gun. That means the bolt and the barrel are locked together, and they are going to stay locked as they travel rearward the entire length of the cartridge, or slightly more, actually. So you can see that we have a uh, the barrel sleeve comes all the way up to here, and we have just this little exposed bit. And if I use my disassembly tool here, I can press this all the way in. This has a very stiff spring to it. There, okay, at that point, now, at full travel, the bolt locks to the rear. The barrel and, well, the barrel assembly here is going to slide forward. And there we go. Now, when the barrel goes all the way forward, it releases a trip, which releases the bolt, which can then come forward, pick up a new cartridge off of the magazine, and chamber it in the pistol. Now, in this case, like I said, this one's a little stiff, and the bolt has stopped uh, partway through its travel here, which is perfect. It allows us to take a closer look at what's going on. You can see on the bolt face here, we've got a locking lug there and another locking lug there uh, on the, in the, the left side. And there's a third locking lug at the bottom. That third lug acts to pick up a cartridge off the magazine. So you can see the magazine right there. We have an interrupter here that's going to prevent the contents of the magazine from flying out. So this lever operates the interrupter and allows you to manually empty the magazine. This button depresses the follower, which prevents the gun from locking open when it's fully empty. All right, now the pistol has locked completely open, and it's done this because it is empty. If there were a cartridge here, what would normally happen is as the barrel, the barrel would continue to go forward until it was all the way home, which it is now, that would then trip a release, which would allow the bolt to slide forward. It has its own separate recoil spring, which is right now compressed inside this area. Uh, the bolt would then pick up a new cartridge, chamber it in the barrel, and you'd be ready to fire again. There is a recoil spring for the barrel inside this jacket, which we can actually take a look at in just a moment. And then, like I said, a second recoil spring back here for the bolt. That's a, uh, a standard feature, uh, an indicative feature of long recoil guns, is that they actually have to have two separate recoil springs. Now this holds 10 rounds. You'd uh, run a stripper clip in here, and all 10 rounds go in there. The way this would normally disassemble is you would undo this screw. This is very much like a Frommer 1910, uh, which I do also have a video on. Check that out in the description if you're interested. That screw is this piece. Once that screw is off, this cover plate uh, comes off, as does this grip panel. And then you can see all the internals to this pistol. Unfortunately, 
this screw is very tight in position uh, and I am not not willing to force it open. So we don't get to take a look at that today, unfortunately. Now to drop the bolt, what I need to do is depress the follower, which mimics uh, new cartridges being loaded. So I do that by pushing this button down. There we go. Give the slide a little tap. This uh, according to what I have read, this is a manual safety, but I can't get this to operate at all in any condition here, whether that hammer's cocked, uncocked, any position of the bolt and the barrel. So that might be wrong, that might not be a safety, but I'm not entirely sure what it is at this point. It is a single action gun, so trigger does nothing when the hammer's down. Uh, when you charge the gun, it does cock the hammer. Yes, that hammer is really goofy looking and awkward hanging off the back of the gun like that. In fact, this whole gun is a bit awkward. It's very muzzle high, which probably isn't that big of a deal because it isn't that powerful of a cartridge, but still a weird design uh, aesthetically. All right, one last thing. We have this knurled stuff all up the front. What I'm going to do is pull back on that and unscrew this muzzle cap. Uh, this is a reverse threaded muzzle cap. Now, this piece is our spring retainer. It's going to stay in place because it's actually got a little key lock inside. What I have to do is push it in and then rotate it. And then it will come off the front like that. And then we have our barrel recoil spring. Now, without a recoil spring to pull it forward, we can see the full extent of the barrel right there. Well, thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Very few of these were made in the first place. Far fewer of them survive to this day, probably only just a handful. Uh, if you're interested in adding this to your own collection of, say, Trials automatic pistols, take a look at the link uh, in the description text below. That'll take you to Rock Island's catalog page. You can take a look at their pictures and uh, place a bid on the phone, over the web, or uh, participate live in the auction here in person. Thanks for watching.